Nathan is my beautiful baby boy. He was born at 24 weeks. He was in the NICU for four and a half months before coming home. And since then, he's been an absolute joy to us. And we just are thankful every day to have Nathan in our lives. Nathan is a survivor. He's a miracle. At first, the pregnancy was going along normally. Um, there was no complications. And then at 15 weeks, all of a sudden, I, my water broke. I remember the doctors telling us that you have no, um, that she has no amniotic fluid in. And I didn't quite understand what that meant. I knew it wasn't a good sign, but once he talked about the grim, grim prognosis, it, it put, pulled us back to reality. The doctor um, looked at me and said, you know, there's very little chance for this baby to survive. Bottom line, I was told that I had about a 10% chance or less of having a surviving baby. And even if the baby did survive, he would be at significant risk of brain damage or other serious complications and that it was a fairly hopeless situation. I was given the option of terminating the pregnancy and was told that that would be a very reasonable decision if I decided to do that. But I just, at that point, I, I could feel the baby moving inside me. I, I knew that he was there and I was already connected to him and there was just no way that I could make that decision to, to end the pregnancy. Any parent to make that decision is so, it's probably the hardest thing. We felt the ground drop. We felt that we were about to lose him. I went on bed rest, I drank a lot of fluids and we did you know whatever I could do to try to um, make sure I didn't kind of rock the boat and um, end up going into labor. So I, I just held on and, and miraculously the pregnancy continued. When she was 23 weeks with Nathan, she got admitted into a hospital. I knew that 24 weeks was the kind of cutoff point for viability um, based on just general medical knowledge. So I knew that that was kind of my baseline. 24 weeks is what I needed to get to. We tried to stay strong. We were hoping for the best because we had no control over what, 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 what's going to happen. As I was going down to the delivery room, he, it was 24 weeks and four days, and I'm thinking there is no chance. I remember walking up there and hearing his history and just being very nervous about it. I went up there with Dr. Eig and he just kind of looked at me and was like, we're going to do everything we can and it's going to be the best we can do. Even when I was on the delivery table, the neonatologist came over to me and said, you know, we're, we're not very optimistic about this. It was out of my hands, left up to then pulling him out, then weighing him, and he was one pound two ounces. And just hearing that number was, was rewarding. We did have a little hope that, you know, he's gonna pull through this. They were working on him, and you know, I was just looking over to see what was going on, and um, next thing I knew, they were wheeling him out to go to the NICU. And the doctor came back over to me and said, it was a little better than expected. We're gonna take him down, we're gonna put him on a ventilator and see if we can get his oxygen levels up. And you know, he's, he's in good hands. Hi, sweetie. Hi, baby. That's your mommy. Babies are tough. They're really tough. Born at 520 grams in 24 weeks is a challenge. And uh, he had many, many problems through his preterm life in the NICU. But the good thing about Nathan is he was able to pull together and he's doing very well, survived. He has a blood pressure that we measure centrally right here through this little pal. Mm -hmm. but in the beginning, it was kind of touch and go. He had a collapsed lung the first night. He had very low oxygen levels, so they weren't even sure if he was going to make it through 
the, the first couple of days, but then he pulled through. Then uh, a week after he was born, we got a call um, about midnight and we were told that he had a bowel perforation. I went to do my first care with him, give my first assessment of my shift, and I noticed a small dusky or blue spot on his belly. We call it neck in the NICU, necrotizing enterocolitis. It can be an infection in the intestines that is, can be very deadly, especially in our babies as small as Nathan. We were incredibly worried. The chances of him surviving was about 40%. Around that time, we haven't had the chance to even hold him. So it was incredibly painful. The bowel um, in these preterm infants does have a propensity to develop what's called spontaneous perforations. And it's just a weak point. And he did have a, uh, a perforation that was uh, taken care of appropriately. Drains are placed. And then at a particular time, either we remove the drains and see if the um, if the holes heal or sometimes they definitely need surgery. They allowed us to hold him before they, they, they performed the surgery. And we just cherished that moment because we, we didn't know we were gonna have a moment like this again. I remember sticking my finger in his isolate and holding his tiny hands and it was, his hands were just, just big enough to hold the tip of my finger. And just him grasping my, hand, my finger was an incredible feeling. The doctors were very cautious, they um, were guarded, they, they weren't sure whether or not he was gonna make it. And a couple days after um, that happened, one of the doctors said to us, you know, he's acting septic. And that means, you know, a, an infection that had spread to his bloodstream and, and that's extremely serious. And so when I heard that, I, I just, you know, all my hope, it just crashed and my heart sank. And, and I ran out and I was in tears and we rushed to the hospital. And when we got there, um, luckily the nurse said, you know, it, was, it wasn't as bad as we thought, you know, that he, he was holding on, he was stable. And, um, and so he gradually progressed from that. About two months after he went into the NICU, he got off the ventilator. And so he was finally breathing on his own and um, doing well. And at that point, we thought, you know, he's probably going to come home. But then another challenge came up. One of the last organ systems to mature are the eyes. And the problem is, is that the eyes feel all of the stress that is placed on the baby, all the changes in oxygenation, changes in blood pressure, changes in nutrition, and they are affected by that since they haven't developed yet. The eyes can develop some significant problems, of which his did. At one point, the doctors told us that he had a very good chance of going blind. They decided to try this kind of more experimental drug. It's called Avastin, and it was um, something that they'd only been using for about a year at that point. We are very, very fortunate to have excellent ophthalmologists that look at these babies at a very methodical particular time. And as soon as they begin to notice that there's abnormality in the blood vessel, blood vessel migration, then they start working on treatment. And the key to this is to catch it early and then to be aggressive with your treatment, of which fortunately Nathan experienced. He's been able to retain his vision. He's um, actually has retained it to such an extent that they don't even expect him to need glasses. The day when he was coming home, we, we could finally celebrate him. We could finally be there and take him home and be like normal parents. And uh, it, it was truly an amazing feeling. It's always a happy day. And in fact, you, you always sort of know one of our long-term babies leaves because it's just, it's just this great atmosphere. It was May 29th. We went and picked him up and we had the perfect outfit for him. We dressed him up um, in a cute little outfit for him to come home. His blue jeans. <laughs> That's what I remember the most, just his blue jeans. A baby who starts out so small, who ends up leaving eight, nine pounds later, eating like a champ, doing great, and just ready to roll home with his family, something that you never thought was gonna happen. It just shows me that what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing and that there's always hope in the darkest of situations that these babies can overcome everything and just thrive. And we just have to keep fighting for them. When we were riding in the car coming home, I just thought to myself, I can't believe it. I was able to take him home. I was able to care for him. I was able to do something. I was able to be there for him. I was able to be a parent. So it was 
just a miraculous, uplifting, a very happy day. There were definitely a few big lessons that came out of this. The first is, is to really appreciate every moment. When you have a baby in the NICU, every little thing is a major milestone. And so you don't take things for granted. Nathan was such a miracle. I mean, he was not expected to survive and, you know, but he did. And he came through incredible odds to get to where he is now. And, you know, one thing that struck me while he was going through that experience is that the only reason he had a chance to survive is because of where he was born and because of, you know, the facility that he was born in. And it struck me that there's so many parents out there who, you know, have babies and locations that, you know, where they don't have those kinds of facilities or, you know, they're in developing countries and don't have access to adequate health care. And so what I want to do is, you know, use Nathan's story to be an inspiration and to show that, you know, survival and not just surviving, but thriving is possible for preemies. I grew up in India and uh, one, one thing I feel confident about is if you were in the same situation and if you were back in India, we probably wouldn't get the same kind of treatment that Nathan got. One way to remed remedy that is to uh, channelize resources that we have over here, the, the knowledge that we have over here, and, and pass it on to um, areas that don't necessarily have the, the right amount of resource. It's a Pebbles of Hope Foundation, and we call it Pebbles of Hope um, because pebbles are tiny, um, but they're also very strong. We're hopeful that with our programs and interventions that we can make a difference in the lives of, of premature babies and um, give them a greater chance of survival. Nathan is doing amazing. He's on target as far as his adjusted age, as far as all of his gross motor skills and fine motor skills, and he's doing everything that a typical baby his age should do. He's babbling, he's communicative, he's social. I never thought that he would make it to this point. Now that he is at that point, it's just so amazing to be able to relax and be able to just enjoy him without worrying about the future or you know, worrying about his survival, you know, I mean, we can just enjoy being with him. He's such a joy. We cherish every moment we have with him right now. I can only see it as a miracle. I can't see it, see it as anything else.